People should know that in addition to my robots, I love robot cannibalism and supernatural creatures. It's just super cool and awesome. Of course this video really should have been done for Halloween, I only considered this topic now though. For Halloween, I had planned to do a little Hellbat video, but I wasn't able to work that day, so I'll do him a little later. I'm very eager now though to talk about mythological and supernatural creatures in the Transformers culture of the line continuity, which includes Transformers Prime. I was making some observations and considering language interpretations, and this research also goes into my writing. Vampires. I didn't know space had vampires! Nor did I. What are vampires? They're creatures that live by sucking your blood. Uh, Energon. <laughs> Do you think he's actually trying to suck out our Energon with that thing? <laughs> sure seems that way. Drinking someone else's Energon is very taboo. Bots are appalled in Transformers Prime and in the Dinobot comics. Though technically, any Cybertronian could be a vampire. They live off Energon, and there's processed usable Energon flowing in all their veins. During the war, there was controversy over whether it was morally alright to consume the Energon of dead comrades or enemies when you're starving. Cybertronians, you need to know now, are very horrified by consuming any part of someone else. Blood drinking alone is called cannibalism. Cannibalism doesn't necessarily include eating metal flesh. Though if Energon is Primus's blood, you would consider if every Cybertronian is technically a vampire leeching on their god. But hey, their god made them that way. What's strange is that Primus also made carnivorous bots that don't seem able to digest his raw Energon, and they have to take it processed from someone else. To Cybertronians, those that feed on other Cybertronians are the ones that frighten and horrify them. Here are some instances that would better compare our concept of vampires to their equivalents. Energon Eaters are large alien creatures floating through space that feed on Energon. They smell running Energon and attack ships, and are seemingly so rare that to many bots, their existence may be questionable. I never knew Energon Eaters were real! I've heard the stories, but no one's ever seen one! Or maybe they just haven't lived to tell about it! Energon Vampires From Robots in the Skies, 2015 A subspecies of bat-like Cybertronians who take Energon from living bots, Nightstrike and Wing Code are examples and had different abilities. The first induced nightmares, and the second could sicken her prey. Nightstrike paralyzes his foe with a sonic scream that affects the Cybertronian brain's fear center, forcing the bot to experience that which they're most afraid of. <laughs> All the while, Nightstrike leeches Energon from his captive. Why are you doing this to us? I realize it's an inconvenience, but one does what one must to collect the energon one needs to survive. The infected and thirst, the unstable simp end was already causing energon deprivation issues. Adding the dark energon seemed to create a disease in which the bot rapidly burned through energon and had an extreme, unquenchable thirst. Dark Energon, coming from Unicron, changed their bodies to be murderous. Of course, because Unicron is all about destroying life. Arachnid is now vampiric, but it's like a disease to her. Predacons From the lore book, Predacons ate bots entirely, but only for their Energon, and then they filtered out the body parts they couldn't digest. They wouldn't be considered vampiric to Cybertronians, but predatory monsters. It's just an interesting note on their biology to make. Shapeshifters and Changers Shapeshifters like Makeshift are so rare that bots thought they didn't exist. Shapeshifters likely kept their abilities secret to exploit them. When Makeshift was taken prisoner in Exiles, discovering his nature was a surprise. He is even asked where he came from, to which he replies, they all spark like anyone else. Shapeshifters are patterned after Amalgamous Prime and are natural, but had been seen as mythological concepts. Zombies Dark Energon has been around for a while, but most bots probably weren't aware it revived the dead until recently. When used as a drug in the war by Decepticons, there was no mention of it reviving the dead. That may be because, in the fights, no one could really tell if they were killing someone alive or dead if they were getting torn apart anyway. The rumors may have started because some bots noticed strange things, dead Decepticons rising when they should be down. Until Transformers Prime, there may not have been solid testing and proof, which explains Starscream's and everyone else's shock. Zombies to them are just as gross and horrifying as they are to us, and then we get some diseased vampiric zombies and thirst. Monsters. 
In Alliance, Cybertronians have called aliens and predatory creatures monsters. At the start of their history, Cybertronians had a terrible experience of Sharktacons in the Quintesson invasion. These aliens have great giant teeth running around and eating them. In Rescue Bots, Blades talks about Cybertronian fairy tales, but they end horribly, with the main character often being eaten by a space monster for not listening to good advice. In their culture, being eaten is the scare tactic to make you heed the lesson of the story. What happens to the bot? He is eaten by a giant space monster. Okay. Mm. Ooh. Actually, that's how most of our stories end. Of course you could call other Cybertronians monsters to refer to their evil behavior, but like us, monster to them could invoke the same image of something with claws and teeth. For them though, they have beastly races and predatory races mixed into their population who can talk to them, so it's a strange reality. And those bots may have no intention of hurting others, and only use their claws and fangs in battle. Then there are the Dinobots who are seen as monsters, scary, unpredictable experiments of shockwave. Lush animals or modified animals, such as the razor snake they encountered, and feral predacons could also fit their label of monsters. But a Cybertronian could consider monsters to be smaller. Bulkhead has seen horrible things, but the Scraplets eating people unsettled him. Everyone panics because of what a horde of Scraplets can do. They're like the flying piranhas of horror movies and are very much real on their world. Sharktacons are big, Scraplets are little, but they could be monsters still to them. Ghosts. Ghosts across the Transformers continuities have largely referred to Starscream. For some reason, he is often written as abnormal and a character who doesn't disappear after death. In Transformers Prime, the usual process of death is the spark joins the old spark. You don't see it fly away, although apparently Onyx Prime could see a spark traveling through a sort of a dead realm. Normally, you aren't able to stop your spirit from going there. However, when Bumblebee goes into Megatron's mind, Megatron is confused and tries to discern why he can't touch Bumblebee. Megatron then claims this. And I do not believe in spirits. So tell me, Scout, what are you? Megatron has a concept of spirits, so it must be in their culture. Perhaps in their past, there were rumors of seeing dead bots, intangible like in our ghost stories. Rumors or cases of abnormal sparks lingering behind could explain this. Alpha Trine wasn't a ghost present in front of Optimus, but while dying, Optimus's spark was close to the old spark. Even if the old spark is far away, they seem to be able to join it instantly, or almost instantly, like of Skyquake. Alpha Trine's spark within the old spark was reaching out to Optimus from across the realms. Megatron was likely thinking of a loose spark in the world able to interact with bots, and that was what he didn't believe in. It is unknown if Starscream's spark has the special ability it has had in the past to stick around and mess with the living. Starscream himself wouldn't even know if he has an abnormal spark until he died. Ghouls When determining who attacked Bumblebee and stole his TCOG, Ratchet uses the term ghoul as he rules out the Decepticons for organ theft. But the Decepticons transform too, why would they steal that? Megatron may be known to raise zombies, but he's no ghoul. If Megatron wasn't behind this, then who was? What does saying Megatron isn't a ghoul mean? It isn't clear what the organ thieving Cybertronian is expected to do with a stolen organ. Eating it, using it, selling it? I would lean on the side of something more vile since our version of ghoul implies eating bodies living or dead. Ratchet may be referencing that equivalent since we do have carnivorous Cybertronians. His translation to English can cover anything from a derogatory slang of a bot-eating race, or a real fear in their culture of something that creeps around at night and feeds on bodies. Ratchet's comment that Megatron isn't a ghoul sounds something like, Megatron is evil, but not known the thieve organs to sell or use, or Megatron is evil, but not a cannibal. Demons Cybertronians don't know Earth religions, but Predaking refers to Unicron as a demon. Cybertronians also don't have dragons, but Unicron says dragon fire. Dark magic, perpetrated by the demon who lives in Megatron's skin. Destroy Primus with your dragon fire! So if they aren't speaking English amongst themselves, what are these words really referring to? Dragon may be a Cybertronian adjective relating to Predacons, while the word demon or demonic refers to something relating to Unicron death or evil. Demon hordes, take flight. 
Transformers culture is special when they have embodiments of good and evil. They see Primus as their good god, and Unicron as his evil opposite god. Cybertronians are made with some innate knowledge as well, and we know that because Predaking was created able to understand and speak Cybertronian. To do that, you have to understand basic concepts. Demon is highly likely to refer to Unicron and bad supernatural energy derived from him. Unicron may be a demon himself, but that to me seems to lower his god status. So what would a demon to Cybertronians look like apart from Unicron? In my opinion, it stands to reason that a demon is a being that Unicron would have created. And the example I think fits this is Thunderwing from the Transformers Prime video game. It is impossible to consider the game canon, but the concept is very neat. Well, he's a big one. Is this giant the source of the Dark Energon? Thunderwing was created by Unicron to destroy the Matrix and wreak havoc. Unicron's creation exists only to destroy life and be evil, which would line up with the common perception of demons on Earth. Thunderwing is also just not your regular Cybertronian because he wasn't made by Primus. This robot would likely live on Dark Energon, not Energon. Dark Energon sickens Cybertronians, but likely sustains Thunderwing because he is a child of Unicron. I think it would be a cool idea if a Cybertronian calling another Cybertronian a demon had the implication of, you are so evil that you weren't created by Primus, but Unicron. The lore says that Unicron never created life, but the Primes assumed that he wouldn't have, but in theory, he could have created life just to help himself fulfill his goals. That possibility is something they could be aware of, but it's up to the Cybertronian to believe if Unicron has dark creations roaming the universe or not. Here he comes! Run! You forgot the end. Uh, happily ever after? Eaten by giant space monsters. <laughs>